You might be thinking this is your run-of-the-mill poop emoji that I 3D printed, but you'd be wrong because it is actually a remote control fart machine. And I'm gonna show you how I made it. Okay, you got me, I'm busted. I have the sense of humor of an eight-year-old. And if you have the sense of humor of an eight-year-old, you're gonna love today's build. If not, just move along. Go on to my next video, this one might not be for you, but if you've ever laughed at someone else's farts, Today is your lucky day. Oh, if you stay to the end of the video, you'll get to see my dog's reaction to the fart machine. Let's get into the build. The idea for this was to make a remote control fart machine. The emoji part came a little bit later. So I knew I was gonna need an MP3 player. So uh, that was going in the package. I wanted it to be a remote controlled. So I needed some sort of RF uh, receiver and switch. Uh, I needed a speaker and that was all going to go into a box. And how it works is you place it underneath a seat uh, by magnets in this case or tape it. When someone sits down, you press the remote and you get the sound out of the machine. Quick jump ahead. This is the first box I made and it's pretty ugly. It's just a black box. And that's when I had the brilliant idea to turn it into a poop emoji. At the heart of this project is an MP3 player called the DF Player Mini. This is a fantastic little MP3 player that can fit into lots of different projects. It can even be controlled by an Arduino or used solo. I'm using it solo. You will also need an SD card. You'll also need a speaker. I had a bunch of speakers in my component box so I was going to test these and see if any of them worked. You're going to need a sliding switch to control the power. I'm going to power this with three AA batteries so you need a holder for all three batteries. I went to my component drawer again to find a wireless module for this project and I found this great uh, two button uh, wireless module connected to two separate relays. Let's go through all the pinouts of the DF Player Mini. Pin number one is VCC voltage input. It can take anywhere from 3.2 to 5 volts. We'll be giving it around four and a half volts with three AA batteries. We aren't using pin number two or three, that's serial input and output. You use that when you connect it to a microcontroller like an Arduino. We aren't going to use four or five. Those are audio outputs for earphones. I just realized that my data sheet is mislabeled. It has pin six as speaker two, but it is actually speaker one, which is speaker positive output. Pin eight will be speaker two pin, which is negative speaker output. Pin number seven goes to ground. Pin number nine is IO one. We won't be using pin number 10 is ground. We will be using pin number 11 IO two. We will not be using. We will be using pin number 12 AD key one. I'll show you how we're going to use that. We're not using 13, 14, 15, or 16. So this is how the AD keys work. If you connect a button to an AD key and you have one side going to ground and one side has a resistor and then you press that button, it's going to connect that resistor to ground and the chip is going to measure the voltage it's getting and depending on the voltage, it has different functionality it will execute. We want to access the play pause functionality and the next track functionality. If we follow the AD key, we can go down to R7, which is a 33 kilo ohm resistor and that access is the play pause functionality. Then we can follow it down to R5, which is a 15 kilo ohm resistor, which accesses the next track functionality and we can connect everything to ground. This is how it looks on the diagram. You connect both resistors to the AD key one pin and then the other ends of those go to the RF receiver. There are four more wires that come off the RF receiver. One of them is power that goes to the battery. Then we have the ground for the RF receiver, which goes to ground. And then we have the two grounds for both relays and they go to ground. Just to be clear, the VCC will go to the battery pack, which will have three AA batteries in it, which will give us about four and a half volts. Also, it's recommended to put a capacitor between the VCC voltage in and the ground. That'll smooth out any voltage issues for the speaker and also make sure we have constant power to the system. It's time to put it together in real life. We'll start off with the DF Player Mini on the breadboard and the SD card. I put four sample tracks on there to test it out. I'm gonna make all the connections I just showed you on the diagram but I'm gonna do it on the breadboard here and this is what it looks like I tested my first speaker out and did not work so well
I forgot to put a capacitor in, so I tried a 100 microfarad capacitor between voltage in and ground. And retested the speaker. And it failed again, just getting electric noise. So it wasn't a capacitor. So I went to my multimeter to measure the voltage and amps I was getting out of it. So I was getting about 4.68 volts and about 343 milliamps. I needed to calculate how many watts my battery pack was putting out to see if I had the correct wattage speaker. To figure out watts, you need to multiply the voltage in volts times the amperage in amps and we're dealing with milliamps so don't forget the decimals and i was getting about 1.58 watts the speaker i was testing was three watts so i was not giving it enough power as luck would have it i actually had a speaker that was 0.25 watts and so that was well under the 1.58 watts i was getting out of my battery pack so i tried it and it worked great I tested a couple other speakers that were within the wattage and they worked well, but the green speaker track just sounded three, better to me. This is MP3 track one. Track two. This is track two, MP3 track two. Things were working well enough on the breadboard, so it was time to put it together permanently and to solder everything into place. I did end up moving the location of the on-off slider switch later on, so uh, it doesn't actually go there. I soldered the grounds of the two relay switches right to the ground of the RF switch so they all had the same common ground. To make soldering easier, I bent all the pins I was going to use on the DF Mini player out and flush against the prototyping board. After I was done soldering, I bent all the other pins as well. I soldered each pin I was going to use to the hole adjacent to it and added plenty of solder so the solder would come through the other side so I could actually solder those pins either on the back or the front of the prototyping board. And then it was Time to solder everything together. I soldered my 15 and 33 kilo ohm resistors directly to the wires on the relays and then put some heat sink over them so they wouldn't short each other out. Then I twisted and soldered the ends of the resistors together because they're both going to the same place. Then I soldered those twisted wires to the AD key one pin. And then I tested it out and you'll notice I moved the power switch to a different location. It was time to record the sound effects for our fart machine, so I brought in an expert on farts, my eight-year-old son. I think you'll agree he did a fabulous job. I played around with the buttons and figured out exactly how it works. The A button plays whatever track is queued up. The B button will advance to the next track, but you have to press it twice. The first time it advances it, the second time it plays it, and then once it's pl been played once by the B button, you can press the A button anytime and that will play that track. I found this great vector image on VectEasy.com of a poop emoji, and this is what I modeled mine after. Here is the finished model in Fusion 360 derived from that VectEasy image. I have a bunch of bodies in this file. There is the back panel, there is the electronics holder on the inside, then there's the main body, and you'll also notice a lot of other bodies. Each body is a feature that needs to be a different color but those bodies are embedded inside of the case. So we have the case, we have the black outline, we have the eyes, the outlines of the eyes, and the mouth. And each one of these will end up a different color in the bamboo slicer, and I'll show you how to do that. Go to File, Export, and you're going to export this into an STL file, and it will export all the bodies in this file into one STL file. It'll keep them separate, it won't join their geometries, which is important. And then find that file and open it in the bamboo slicer. It has all of those bodies in there, but we have to get to them. So click on objects, you'll see there's only one object right there, which is the poop emoji. But uh, if you right click and go to split to parts, all those bodies inside of that body are now selectable. So you're gonna make sure you have the correct colors loaded in your bamboo printer. You can select the color you want for each part. Left click, it'll bring down the drop down menu of all the colors you have loaded up in your software. And we have the outline, which is black. Then you go to the next part, which is the mouth, that'll be white. 
Oops, that's the outline of the mouth. That'll be black. Might take you a few tries because it's sometimes it's not entirely clear which color goes where until you select it. Flip it over, slice it, and send it to your printer. I got a smooth PEI plate from Bamboo and I tried it on that and it came out fantastic. It was nice and smooth, it was matte. I'm comparing the textured on the right to the smooth on the left and you can see the difference. Uh, depending on the effect you want and what you want to print, uh, the smooth comes out great. It doesn't catch the light like the texture does. Then I printed the lid and the electronics insert and you have to put magnets inside of the lid if you want it to stick to metal objects. So in the slicer you add a pause at the correct layer and then the machine will pause and then you can slide your magnets in. I am going to add a fourth magnet into the final version of this because it's not quite as strong as I would like it to be uh, when it's magnetizing against the bottom of a chair. And then when you're done adding all the magnets, you just press resume and it will print over those magnets like they aren't even there. I used my soldering iron with a threaded insert attachment tool uh, to put M2 threaded inserts into the holes on the body of the poop emoji. I set it to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, pressed it, it melted the material around it, push it flush, and then it cools down quickly. I'm using M2 screws, so after the, all the threaded inserts are in, you can start putting the battery pack in. I forgot to put the speaker in, so I loosened up that screw again uh, so I could fit the speaker into the slot, and it stays there with enough pressure from the battery holder so you don't even have to glue it in if you don't want to. Then insert the electronics holder and set your electronics on top, and I just put a piece of tape over them to hold it into place. Nothing fancy. Then and you can use M2 screws to secure the lid into place. If you need to get in to change batteries, just unscrew the bottom two screws and the top will slide if you loosen it up just a little bit. And it's all together. You have your poop emoji fart machine. Turn it on and test it out. Welcome to your next lesson, how to prank someone. Step one, find a chair that someone might sit in. Step two, secretly put your poop emoji underneath the chair so no one can see it. Step three, wait for somebody to sit in the chair. This can require patience. Step four, press the button. Step five, have a good laugh. You can try it on pets too. Even pets as cute as my dog Tucker. Tucker doesn't know what's coming. I secretly hid the poop emoji fart machine under his blanket. Shh. Ah, finally some me time on the couch. Just a quick nap. What the? Was that me? What did I have for breakfast? I think the couch just farted. I didn't know it could do that. What's a dog got to do to get a nap? Hmm. Maybe I should try the couch again. Yeah, not worth the risk. I'm out of here. To all my people out there with juvenile senses of humor, thank you for watching. <laughs> If you like the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, share the video. If you make one of these, make sure you take a picture or video. I would love to see your creations, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>